Sutra. He universally reaches all the worlds of the ten directions, yet he does not grasp at any location. He adorns and purities lands totally without remainder, and yet has never given rise to discriminations of purity. Living beings, whether in good places or bad places, with all their different karma, influences, and retributions, complying with them, considering them, he enters the Buddha's powers, completely comprehending them all, the various different natures of all those in the world, their various activities while dwelling in the three states of existence, sharp roots, mediocre, roots and inferior roots. In this way, all are completely contemplated, the pure and impure and all kinds of understandings, superior, inferior, and mediocre, all are clearly perceived, perceived by him as for the activities of living beings which lead to various places. He can completely explain their continuation in the three states of existence. Commentary, he universally reaches all the worlds of the ten directions. The Bodhisattva goes everywhere to the worlds of the Buddhas in the ten directions to worship the Buddhas, praise the thirst come ones, and vastly cultivate the making of offerings. Yet he does not grasp at any location. Although the Bodhisattva goes everywhere, he is not attached to a best place or a worst place. He doesn't have this kind of discriminating mind, nor is he attached. He just goes to the ten directions to reverently making offerings to all offerings to all Buddhas. He adorns and purifies lands totally without remainder. He goes to all the lands of the ten directions in order to adorn all Buddha lands, not just a single Buddha land and yet has never given rise to discriminations of purity. Although he adorns, he adorns lands, he doesn't produce thoughts of wanting to purify them. He doesn't discriminate between purity or impurity, adorned or unadorned. Living beings, whether in good places or bad places, he doesn't pay attention to whether living beings are in the hells or in or had the heavens. That is not important to him. With all their different karma influences and retributions, he also does not discriminate among living beings different karmic influence and retributions in the three states of existence. Complying with them, considering them, he enters the Buddha's powers. This is complying with potentials and speaking Dharma, contemplating the opportunity to dispense the teaching according with the person and speaking the Dharma according with the sickness and prescribing the medicine. This is how the Bodhisattva teaches. He uses all the expanded powers of the Buddha, completely comprehending them all. He understands whatever expanded method he uses to teach and transform living beings. The various different natures of all those in the world refers to all the various root natures of all beings, their various activities while dwelling in the three states of existence. This means all the things which living beings do in the three states of existence while turning without rest. Sharp roots, mediocre roots, and inferior roots. Regardless of whether beings have sharp roots, which means they are smart, or mediocre roots, which means they are common individuals, or inferior roots, which means they are stupid. The Bodhisattva doesn't discriminate in this way or are completely contemplated. All the various root natures of beings are clearly understood by the Bodhisattva. The pure and impure and all kinds of understandings, perhaps beings are pure or impure. In all kinds of ways, he understands all the root natures of living beings. Perhaps they have superior, inferior, and mediocre, 
or are clearly perceived by him. Superior rules are the same as good or sharp rules. Inferior rules are dull rules, and rules which are neither sharp nor dull are mediocre. The Bodhisattva comprehends them all as for the activities of living beings which lead to various places. Living beings receive the result of the causes, causes they plant. One will receive the result according to the path that one practices, always brought about by oneself. He can completely explain their continuation in the three states of existence, in the will of the desire form and formless realms of existence. Living beings flow and turn in birth and death continuously without cease. The Bodhisattva for the sake of living beings is able to speak about this in detail. Sutra, Dhyana concentrations, liberations and all samadhis, divide and pure their causes and arise each are different. Also included are the different sufferings and pleasures from the past. He purely cultivates the Buddha's power, so all of these can be perceived. Living beings, karma and delusions continue in all destinies. Cutting of all destinies, one obtains still extinction, whereupon all kinds of outflowing dharmas will never again arise. The seeds of these habits are all clearly known. The first come one has totally put an end to afflictions. His great wisdom light shines upon the world. With respect to the Buddha's ten powers, with uh, although the Bodhisattva has not yet been certified to them, nonetheless he does not doubt them. The Bodhisattva in a single hair paw universally makes appear the measureless shatras of the ten directions. Whether they have defilement or purity, all the various kinds of karma created are all understood by him. Within a single particle of dust are measureless shatras and measureless Buddhas and disciples of the Buddhas. All the shatras are different but not jumbled. As with one, so too all are clearly perceived. Commentary Dhyana Concentrations The four dhyanas the four stations of emptiness plus the concentration of extinction of feeling and thought make up the nine successive concentrations. Liberations are the eight liberations, and all samadhis refer to all the various stages of concentration. Divide and pure, their causes and arisal each are different. If you plant pure causes, it is easy to obtain concentration and liberation. Also included are the different sufferings and pleasures from the past. Perhaps in their past lives, living beings received mostly suffering or perhaps they received mostly pleasure. He purely cultivates the Buddha's power so all of these can be perceived. The Bodhisattva cultivates the Buddha's ten powers so he can clearly understand these kinds of causes and conditions. Living beings, karma and delusions continue in all destinies. Why do living beings revolve, revolve in the six paths? Because of karma and delusion, they perpetuate within the various destinies. They give rise to delusion create karma and undergo the retributions over and over again. So they continue on without cease in the turning wheel of the six paths, cutting of all destinies. One obtains still extinction if one is able to cut off all of the six paths of the turning wheel, then one will obtain still extinction and be able to live the three states of existence, whereupon all kinds of outflowing dharmas will never again arise. This means cutting off all kinds of bad habits, false ignorance and afflictions, not producing thoughts of desire. The Bodhisattva eternally cuts off all outflows and all bad habits, for he is aided by the ten powers of the Buddha. The seeds of these habits are all clearly known.
This is a four living beings' habits are completely understood by the Bodhisattva. The first come one has totally put an end to afflictions. The Buddha has no afflictions. He has cut them off. His great wisdom light shines upon the world. Because one has no afflictions, one's basic wisdom naturally manifests with respect to the Buddha's ten powers, the ten wisdom powers of the Buddha. Although the Bodhisattva has not yet been certified to them, nonetheless, he does not doubt them. He has implicit deep faith. Although the Bodhisattva hasn't obtained the ten powers, yet his heart is without doubt about them, and in the future he is certain to obtain them. The Bodhisattva in a single hair paw universally makes up here the measureless stretchers of the ten directions. He is able to pervasively make up here the immeasurable Buddha stretchers of the ten directions. Whether they have defilement or purity, Buddha stretchers may be defined or may they may be pure. There are of various different kinds. All the various kinds of karma created are all understood by him. Living beings create all kinds of karma and receive all kinds of retributions, and the Bodhisattva understands them completely. Within a single particle of dust are measureless shetras and measureless Buddhas and disciples of the Buddhas. Within a single dust mold, there are manifested immeasurable Buddha Shetras, and within those immeasurable Shetras, there are also immeasurable Shetras Buddhas speaking the wondrous Dharma. There are also immeasurable oceanic great assemblies, immeasurable great Bodhisattvas who reverently circumambulate each of those Buddhas and request them to speak the Dharma. All the Shetras are different but not jumbled. Within a single hair paw or perhaps a single particle of dust, they manifest immeasurable Buddha Shetras and they are not mixed up, mixed up together. All are in order and well arranged. As with one, so too all are clearly perceived. When one is able to understand a single world system or a single Buddha Shetra, and one can perceive them all, and they are seen very clearly without being mixed up or jumbled. Sutra within a single hair paw are seen the ten directions and all worlds exhausting the realm of space. There is not a single place which is empty without a Buddha. In this way, the Buddha Shetras are totally purified. Within a single hair paw are seen Buddha Shetras and also are seen all living beings. The six paths of the three builders of time are each different. In the time of days, nights, and months, they are liberated or bound. In this way, the Bodhisattvas of great wisdom single mindedly tend towards the position of Dharma king. The compliantly, they compliantly consider where the Buddhas dwell and obtain boundless great happiness. Commentary within a single hair paw are seen the ten directions. The Bodhisattva sees the walls of the ten directions within a single hair paw, and all walls exhausting the realm of space. Not only does he see the walls of the ten directions, but he seeing includes all the Buddha Shetras, which exhaust the realm of space and pervade the Dharma realm. There is not a single place which is empty without a Buddha. There is no place where there is not a Buddha. That is, the Buddha totally fill up all places. In this way, the Buddha Shetras are totally purified. All the particles of dust manifest the world systems of the ten directions, and each of the world systems of the ten directions contain immeasurable Buddhas who teach and transform living beings. These Buddha Shetras are purified and adorned. Within a single hair paw are seen Buddha Shetras. Within every hair paw, there are seen the Buddha Shetras of the ten directions and also are seen all living beings. Not only are all the Buddhas seen, but all the living beings also appear as well. 
the six paths of the three Buddhas of time are each different. The three Buddhas of time are the past, present, and future. The six paths are the gods, human beings, as well as the hungry ghosts, the house, and the animals. The beings who dwell in those realms are different. In the time of days, nights, and months, they are liberated or bound. Perhaps this takes place in the daytime or at night or for a month. It is different, different for each person. Either living beings are bound up by karma or they obtain liberation. In this way, the Bodhisattvas of great wisdom or the Bodhisattvas of great wisdom who have attained the steps spoken of before single-mindedly tend towards the position of Dharma King. They turn their minds to the full position of Dharma King. By cultivating the six crossings over and the ten thousand practices, they compliantly consider where the Buddhas dwell. They accordingly reflect upon the Buddha's state and obtain boundless great happiness. They understand the states of all Buddhas and so they produce a limitless heart of great happiness.